the Hamilton Rebel Media. Uh, Damien, you had you finished the third quarter with six points, but then you got explosive in the fourth, finishing with 22. How were you able to overcome that? Um, I mean, that's my my entire career in the league. I've always, um, you know, been able to put the first three quarters behind me and, uh, and come up big when my team has needed it. And you know, all, all my teammates said throughout the game, they just kept saying, "Keep shooting, um, stay with it, stay aggressive, um, keep your mind right." And um, I was, I would have been doing that all along, but it was, it felt good to, you know, to have that encouragement and that support, um, especially with them trapping so high out. You know, I had to trust the the right play. You know, hitting the guy in the middle um, and allowing him to make the, the next play to the weak side. And I just had to be patient. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't even so much. Um, Missing the shots that that would bother me it was just I couldn't get any attempts, you know, because they were so aggressive. But um, I stayed with it, um, kept my mind right, and um, I saw one go in, and that was that was it. David Casey, Football Journal, uh, You started the fourth quarter, which which typically you don't. Did you did you was that a change that you asked for, or do you know exactly what what the reasoning behind that was? No, I was I was actually surprised myself. I usually uh, play the third, and then I sit the first couple minutes of the fourth, um, but I. I hadn't gotten it going, um, and I, Coach Stotts knew that it was a game that we we needed to win. You know, it was a huge game for us, and you know I think he left me out there just so I could get it going. And uh, you know that was a great call on, on his behalf because um, you know I had a stretch before I came out where I hit um, I made like three shots in a row, so I was feeling good when I came back into the game again. Um, so that was that was his call. Hey, Mal Murray, Clipper blog. What did you see defensively from the Clippers that was different from the first four games? Uh, nothing was really different. Um, you know, they played a smaller lineup uh, more often than they did the first couple of games. But everything that that I did, they were just as aggressive. Um, you know, it was it was obvious that they wanted me to get rid of the ball, just like it was in the first uh, four games. And um, I just made the right play. You know, they they stayed true to what they've been doing all series long, and uh, so did I. AP Mark. Radio over here. Uh, things were somewhat bleak when you left here after two days, and you kind of completely turned the series around. What, what's the feeling now that you are on the verge of possibly clinching it? Uh, it's it's a great feeling, but um, even after after the first two games here, I said that you know the series changes every game. Uh, after game three, we felt really good going into game four at home again. We played well. Um, and then we played really well again, and um, unfortunately they had some injuries that you know completely changed their team. Um, so it, like I said, it changes every game. We had a good game tonight. We finished it, um, and they could, they got a good enough team to do the same thing to us. So um, you know we got to just continue to uh, get better at the things that we've done well in this series. That's that's given us a chance to win these games. Gary Eggers, Portland Tribune. Damian, you won three in a row. Now you go back home. Do you think they've broken the Clippers' will at all with with the, taking the momentum like this? You know, I, you know they're they're a competitive group. Uh, you know, and even without CP and Blake, I think they have a team that can really compete. You know, they got some explosive guys out there. Um, they they still have guys where they can be a really good disruptive defensive team. So I mean, they they know that if they can. They can try to come win this next one in Portland as the series is coming back here. And um, at that point, anything can happen on your home floor. So um, I wouldn't say that their their will is broken. Um, just understanding that part of it, but um, it's all, it also makes it tough when you know you got to go back to an arena like ours and, and win the game. Danny Kevin Arnold at CSPN.com. There was a stretch of about four possessions in the fourth quarter that put the game away. You guys got like eleven points and, and four trips down. A lot of the sort of perimeter actions we've been accustomed to seeing from you guys during the season, but haven't really done a lot during this series. If you could like walk us through kind of that period. Um, well, we we had a lead. It wasn't a huge lead, but we, we were in control of the game. And uh, CJ had, got, had it going a little bit. I had saw the ball go in, and uh, we wanted to have long possessions, uh, make them make them guard a set, and then, you know, get it into my hands or CJ's hands and, and make something happen. And um, a lot of times it ended in AC having the ball and me coming off a flare or CJ coming off a pin down and vice versa. And um, we just we just kept them we kept them busy. You know, it was a guy on the weak side, so they couldn't have a guy helping over helping. And uh, we executed really well down the stretch and was able to get some looks. And uh, you know, we knocked down shots. Last couple right here. Lewis Keen by Sports. Uh, the Clippers were up five at the half. Were you surprised by that? And what was the attitude like in the locker room? No. Um, 
I wasn't surprised. I mean, we, we missed a lot of free throws in the first half. We didn't shoot the ball well in the first half. And we didn't defend uh, with the urgency that we had defended in the, the past three games. Um, so it wasn't a surprise. They, they got it going. They were feeling confident. Uh, they saw the ball go in early. And, you know, they, they felt that they, were, they could win this game, as they should. And we came in the locker room and we, you know, we were honest with ourselves. You know, we, the first thing I heard when I walked in was we're not, we not guarding as we have been. Uh, we're not as locked in as we need to be. And guys were, you know, just throwing things out like that. And once we realized it, you know, we, we go out there, we correct it in the third quarter, I think, for a long time. You know, they didn't, they only had like 12 points uh, toward the end of the third quarter, and we, we fixed it. Um, you know, so on the defensive end, we knew we needed to be better, um, and we, we got better. Last question in the back. Jill Freeman of Argonian. Dame, after a season of being the quote-unquote underdog, could you describe what it's like now to, to be a favorite, to be a team that's favored? Um, I mean, it's funny that, that we'd be considered a favorite. Um, because they had a really good team. Uh, this this is a team that uh, went to Utah against a really good Utah team at the end of the season and beat them with, with none of their guys there except Jamal Crawford. And he just went off and they, they beat a good team. Uh, they went to OKC at the end of the season and almost won a game with uh, OKC at full strength. So, um, you know, it's funny you say that. They Neither team had a, you know, had a, a all-star out there. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it was a game that we knew was going to be tough, and we came out and we did what we had to do. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you.